this morning with uh, a two-year-old named Bixby. Bixby's is by ain't, I uh, ain't seen nothing yet and a bully bullion mare. And so we, we bought her last fall or last year. This time we've uh, sent her off to the colt breaker. So she's broke at this point. But what we really want to do is through the next uh, few months really show the things of how to get these young ones really started, kind of document those things and really uh, put them on the film. Jennifer's going to talk about what she feels like Bixby needs to know before she goes to the barrels. And so, Before we go to the barrels, I just wanted to briefly point out the saddle um, that I'm going to be using on Bixby. For Bixby, I chose the Lynn McKenzie Special. It's the narrowest of all of our saddles. This, the tree still has a little bit of flair to it. Um, it, ha it opens up here for these shoulders so they get good movement up under these shoulders. And then I like this, uh, I still like this uh, Lynn McKenzie by US pad with the foam insert. Um, Bixby has a lot of filling out to do yet. And so for her right now, this, uh, this by US pad with the Lynn McKenzie special tree saddle is a really great fit for her. One of the things that really made us pick Bixby to be our next prospect was Hope. And I got Hope in late in her two-year-old year, and she had about 60 rides on her uh, from Karen and Jason Barron's. And I was just really impressed with Hope through the whole process of getting her started to up until even now. Um, she has just been really easy, uh, really willing, has a great work ethic. And so that was one of the, that was one of the things that really made me pick Bixby and of course her her stunning looks that <laughs> doesn't hurt at all but um, so when you're when you're thinking about uh, potential prospects for yourself I think the biggest thing for to do is is to kind of really be honest with yourself about the kind of horse that you need and so for me at the point that I'm at in my life I've suffered um, I think four concussions that I know of and several other injuries and so for me at this point in my life, I can't really afford to get hurt anymore. And so one of the things that I want in a prospect is I want them to be gentle. And, and Hope was all, she even still, she's just a very gentle horse. And after talking to other people that owned um, babies out of Bigsby's daddy ain't seen nothing yet, it seemed to be a trait that he passed on to his babies. So that was, that was an important thing to me. The next thing is that when I send my colts off to a colt breaker, I want that colt breaker to be complimentary to what I want these horses to do. And I want to be able to communicate how I want my horses to feel when I get them back from that colt breaker and him res re be respectful of that. And so for every discipline, th there's a lot of basics that are the same, but there are some differences that you need to be aware of when you're sending a colt off to a colt breaker. Uh, we have developed a great work friendship and working relationship with Karen and Jason and having ridden uh, behind Jason quite a bit and, and then him and I talking, we both came to a mutual understanding of how, how I wanted these colts to feel when they came from him. And the, the, the biggest thing is gentle. You know, he spends a lot of time uh, riding these colts not just in a round pen but but out and about and so for me that's important because I don't have a round pen and I don't have an arena with a fence so my colts need to be able to come here and be okay with being out in the wide open spaces and it not scare them so he he starts off a little bit in the round pen but as soon as he can he gets those colts out and starts uh, exposing them to things. The other thing is, I don't want the first time that a colt feels like they're in a bind or in a pressure situation to be the first time that I'm on their back. I want them to already have had some experience with getting in binds and working that out with the colt breaker. And I, I'm not saying that I want the colt, the, my colt breaker to be mean or abusive to my colts, but I want them to intentionally put them in some bonds at times and find out how they're going to react. 
and if if that's going to be something that I can handle because if they, he you put them in a blind bind and they're explosive and they want to to run off or, or start bucking or rearing up and acting stupid that that's not going to work for me and so I, I that's that's something that I need to know before I ever get on them is if you put this colt in a bind how are they going to react the next thing is I want my colts when I pull them into a circle I want them to follow their nose on that inside pull just like I was leading them with a halter into that circle that when I pull on that face that their body and their shoulders begin to move in into that circle and they follow that inside rein on that circle the next thing that I want to be able to do is with my with my feet I want to be able to to kick that hip and have them move that hip out of the way in both directions because then when I'm asking for that inside circle and I them to come to the inside and I run my foot back and I bump that hip I want to feel a big reach and step with that inside foot because that begins to help those colts develop the strength that they need to make that turn step where they drive that inside leg under and across in that turn. It's, uh, we've said this before, but the, it's the front end's job to go straight and the back end's job is to turn. So I always want my horses to move forward into a turn. I don't want, I don't want a, a backwards feel. And you know, when I used to, when I, when I was younger and I would, was asking my colts to pivot, I never, I never understood what it mattered, whether they pivoted on the outside foot or the inside foot. And one day we went and rode with um, Dry Stoner and his dad. And his dad pointed out to me that one of my horses was using the outside foot to pivot, to outside foot to pivot. And he said, when they do that, in essence, they're backing around the corner. Well, for barrel racing, that's not, that is not the feel that I want my horses to have. So I want them to be able to push them forward and their pivot foot be the inside back foot right there. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want it to be that I'm backing these horses in a, in a pivot. I don't, I don't that because th this foot has to be a forward motion foot. This outside foot has to come and reach forward so that can't that can't be the planted foot that they're pivoting on and so then when you do that you're teaching those colts to back around the corner instead of to move forward around the corner if i'm going to come up to to a corner and i'm going to turn right or left i don't come up to the corner and my step be that i step to the right and then i turn my body when I come up to a corner, I maintain forward motion and move my body up and around the corner. I don't step to the right and then pivot my body to make that turn. That would not be very efficient to do it that way. So we can't, we don't, I don't want my horses turning corners that way either. I don't want their first move to be that they step in and then try to make the rest of their body follow that. I want the front to move forward and the back end be what makes the turn. Now Bigsby's still a little green and she's, she's learning a little bit, but the way that I start that thought process in them is that I get them to where they'll follow this inside rein around in this circle. and really get a lot of movement in that back end. The other thing that I'm doing by doing this is I'm starting to connect this horse's front foot to my hand. That they follow my hand with that front foot. Every now and then I'm gonna bump that hip and really ask for that extension behind. And I can pull her into this circle. I can tighten this down. 
with just my inside rein. I can pick my hand back up and I can move her back out into a bigger circle. And she's following my hand. Now do this both do that both ways. Usually what you'll find is your horses will be a little better one way than they are the other way. If you need to, you can, if you have split reins, kind of tap that hip. Really get them encouraged to move in that hip around. Stretching that out, making that turn step. Bring her in tight. Pick that hand up and push her back out. But now Bixby's beginning to connect her foot to my hand. So I can control, I can control where this front foot lands based on my hand placement. Where that becomes really important in barrel racing is when you get on bad ground. You really do want those horses to have that foot connected to that hand in bad ground because you can let, kind of lay them in there if it's really good ground and you know that it's going to hold them or you can stand them up if you know that it's ground that they could potentially slip and fall on. The next thing is to, that I like for, to feel in my horses is a side, that side pass that they can move laterally shoulders and hips sorry there's a B <laughs> both directions now Jason had Bigsby for 60 days before she went I had saddled her up and lunged her a little bit she'd had a bit in her mouth a few times I didn't necessarily do a whole lot of bidding up with her because she is really, really light in the face. So it doesn't, it doesn't really take much in the face to get a response from her. And so I didn't want to get her oversensitive before Jason had a, a chance to kind of put the feel on her that he wanted to put on her. So now once I know that they can side pass and they'll move off of this, they'll move away from this rain then when I'm in this circle, and I want to square them up and tighten this down a little bit, and I can just pick up this outside rein and push on it. You can see she brings her shoulders in but she still keeps that forward motion. Now I'm gonna tell you straight off, all of this is super, super easy for this filly. So if your colt struggles with this at first, don't get frustrated. Push with that outside rein. Now once I've got that part going and I know that she knows how to start to move off of that inside rein, then I can work that into, the, into a counter arc. Now this is really hard for young horses. I'm getting attacked by these freaking bees. So there again, don't get frustrated if your colt struggles with this at first. Just be patient and keep asking. Keep keep asking. If you have to use your 
inside rain and bring them back into a circle to the inside and slowly work this in where they're moving off of this pressure of this outside rain before they get to where you can hold just the outside rain and ask them to move that front end. One of the things that I try not to do is I try not to make when that when I'm counter arcing them, I want them I want them to pick up and move. I don't want to feel them fall in this direction like that. That's not the move that I want to put in my horses. I want every move that they do to be that they actually pick up and move forward into the position that I want them to be in. I don't ever want that movement to be that they fall. When you're teaching this counter arc, you may find it that if you really pull your weight into this stirrup and get them kind of following that weight, you might find that that's a very helpful helpful thing to do. And you and you start teaching them how to follow your weight in this turn. Daddy, you're gonna have to stop. These bees. When I put my colts on barrels, I keep them out. And all I'm looking for is just to teach them basically that go straight and then turn. I want them to get comfortable with this go straight and then turn. And it may not be pretty when you first start. But you just want to work on that go straight and turn. Just try to keep it as simple as possible to start with until they get the hang of that go straight and then turn. And I do a lot of trotting in the beginning because I want to build cadence and consistency from the very beginning. And I try to start my colts how I know that I'm going to be riding them when they're finished. And for me, it's lay the rein, step out, a little bit of outside rain pressure to square those shoulders up and finish the turn. In the beginning, I'm going to use this rein up against the neck to push her up into this turn as far as I want her to go. And put that in her from the very beginning. Rain up against her neck to push her up into this turn. Rain up against her neck. And I'll probably do this for two weeks until I know that Bigsby is really understanding what I'm telling her. When I go between my barrels, I'm not asking for her to hold any kind of shape. I'm sitting square in my saddle. 
when I get to the turn, that's when I pick up that inside rein, bump with my inside foot and ask for that shape in her body. Straight across to this second barrel. Inside rain on her neck. Now right on the very back side of that turn is where I try to step out and get them to really follow my body to hold that shape around the back of the turn. So I'll start slowly kind of working that in with her. It goes straight, lift on the inside, step out. A little bit of outside rain pressure to finish. Straight, lift, step out, a little bit of outside rain to finish. Straight, lift, step out, a little bit of outside rain to finish. Wow, what a great first day on the pattern for Bigsby. Everything that I had, that Jason and I had spent time teaching her in the, in the starting, starting and breaking process, she utilized it perfectly on her pattern right there. She knew exactly what I was asking her to do, and she did it. I made sure as her trainer that I gave Bigsby very clear and precise signals so that there, it would limit the confusion in her, and she showed she showed that she understood by giving the correct response nearly every single time. I, I just couldn't be any happier with a first day on the pattern for a two-year-old. Well, thank you for watching our video today. Be sure, if you're not subscribed, to hit that subscribe button. Click that thumbs up that you like our videos. And hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when we post new videos. And we'll see you next time.